Okay, so we're going to introduce in this video arithmetic series. And what I want to do is kind of introduce it via a bit of historical context. Um, Carl Friedrich Gauss, um, famous mathematician, born in the late 18th century, um, I think the late 1770s, um, was set a problem by his uh, school teacher at the time when he was quite young, um, I think in his elementary school or something like that. And um, he was set the problem of adding up the numbers from 1 all the way up to 100. Okay, so the teacher obviously gave him this work to do, thinking, right, this will this will take him a long time. Okay, um, that will keep him busy. Um, but Gauss found a way uh, in order to speed the process up. So actually, he managed to do it relatively quickly. And the way that he did it was this. He thought, well, if this is the answer I'm looking for, this S, okay, then what I could say is that I could write the same sequence underneath, but round the other way, okay, so um, in opposite order. So I've got actually 100 plus 99 plus 98 plus da 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 da, da plus 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1. Okay, so actually what I have here um, are the same sequence, but one under the other, but one with the numbers reversed. Now, if I added those two sequences together, okay, then what we're going to get is 1 plus 100, which is 101, 2 plus 99 is 101, 3 plus 98 is 101, plus lots of 101s as we go. Okay, so they're all 101. Now, because I've got this, I can then say, well, how many 101s do I actually have? Well, I've got 100 of them, going from 1 up to 100. So I could write that 2s is actually 100 lots of 101. So then, well, that means that S has to be, dividing both sides by 2, 50 lots of 101. Okay? So 50 times 100, okay, is that, so 5,000. Um, and then adding on the extra 1, we've got 5,050, okay? So, in doing this, right, he was able to make a very complicated looking problem a lot simpler, okay? And to be thinking that this was done by, you know, this was sorted out by a child, effectively, Gauss was very bright for his age and became a fantastic mathematician. Um, and a very influential one. So, from this, we can develop a very similar technique in order to add up any arithmetic sequence. And so we don't need to just have it from 1 up to 100, for example. So, if we use a similar method, right, let's get rid of that for the moment. So I'd have the first term A, then the next term would be A plus D, then the next term, so I'll pop that in a bracket, plus the next term would be A plus 2D, okay, plus all the way up to, now what we're going to do here is we're going to call the last term in the sequence L, okay, so if I write down that I'm 2 down from L, so L minus 2D plus L minus D, plus finally the last term in the series L. And if we call this sum S like we did before, 
and then rewrite the same series but underneath in the uh, opposite order. We can have L there, then we'd have L minus D, then we'd have L minus 2D, and then here we would have uh, A plus 2D, then A plus D, then A. So if I then added these two series together, I'm going to get 2s, but now, right, I'll write it over here, 2s, but now I'm going to have a plus l plus, well, when adding these two together, the d's cancel, so I get a plus l. The two d's cancel, so I get a plus l plus, etc. a plus l plus a plus l plus a plus l. Okay, well, all of the terms are now a plus l. Now, how many do I actually have? Well, I've got 1, 2, 3, all the way up to my last term, which is n. Okay, so this would be the n lots of a plus l. And then, you know, you can divide both sides by 2, so that s is 1 half n a plus l. So the sum, as we say, to n terms we can write in this nice, succinct way. So when we were looking to add up the first 100 terms from 1 up to 100, we had that the first term was a, the last term was 100, and the number of terms was 100. So you could say that s100, the sum to the first 100 terms, was a half times 100 times 1 plus 100 which gives you the 50 times 101, which is the 5,050 that we had before. Okay? Now, this all presupposes that I know what the last term of the sequence is. What if I didn't? Okay? What if I didn't know what that last term was? Well, I know that it would have the nth position. Okay, because if I was saying it's the sum to n terms, the last term has position n in the sequence. So I know that L is actually my nth term. Now, if L is the nth term, I have a formula for the nth term. It's this. So I can replace the L with a plus n minus 1d, because that is what L is. So you can also write that Sn is 1 half n a plus, replacing the L with this, a plus n minus 1 d. So you now have 2a plus n minus 1 d. So this one, this formula, and this formula, they are both going to give you exactly the same result, but one is useful if you know the first, last terms, and n, the number of terms, and the second formula is useful if you just know the first term, the common difference, and the number of terms you're looking for. So two slightly different ones to use, but they both give you the same results.